Hi, this is Jamie from Stonemaier Games, and today I'm here to talk to you about my favorite game mechanism in Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a card drafting game where you'll draft a hand of cards over three rounds, and you'll place them on the table and build your empire. I recently played Seven Wonders, and I realized while I was playing it what I think is really clever about Seven Wonders. I played this game many times. Um, I know how to play the game very well. I never have to go back to the rule book unless I have some of the expansions with... The game has a lot of symbols, so sometimes you have to, you have to go back to the, the rule books for the expansions. But the thing that I noticed when I recently played it is that I really like how the game escalates. Early on, the age one cards are very basic. And part of this is obvious, like... It, when you're building the civilization, the, you have to build a foundation before you can build, like, grand monuments and, and technologies and things like that. But the other thing this thing does is when you're starting out on a game, especially a game that maybe you haven't played for a few months, you don't want to have to make really hard decisions right away. You want simpler decisions and simpler things to keep track of. It's kind of the game's way of easing you back into the game after what might have been a long reprieve. And as the game escalates, the cards get more and more complicated. The second age cards, let's see, second age cards might have some more stuff on it, or they'll have cost on them, as do some first age cards, but second age cards are more complicated. And then once you get to the third age, things have big cost on them, because you've built up a lot of resources. And, and things in this age, decisions are a lot harder, um, in some ways, because you have more options to choose from, and more complicated costs to consider. In other ways, the options also, you've already kind of limited yourself. So you may have, say this card comes up, and you haven't built any brick-producing cards. You just don't even have to consider this card. So even late in the game, your decisions are interesting, but they're not overwhelming, such that when you have a hand of seven cards late in the game, you probably don't have to consider all seven of them. You can only consider maybe three or four of them because of the things that you've already built. I really appreciate this concept of escalation in a game. It really builds the game to a climax, and early on, it's really easy to get back into the game. Um, I, I think sometimes designers don't consider this. We design games, and we think, oh, people are going to play these games all the time. But really, more likely, people are probably going to play the game a few times um, when they first receive it. They'll, they'll go through the... The, they'll learn the rules, they'll teach the rules to a few people, they'll get tired of teaching the rules to people, and they'll just play it a few more times, and then it'll probably sit on their shelf for a while, and they'll come back to it, hopefully, after a few months. And it's that play that's almost just as important as the first play of the game, because you want to make it really easy for people to get back into the game again. And this is a brilliant way of doing it. If, within the context of each individual game, the decisions you make start off really simple, and get more complex as you play, that makes it a lot easier to get back into the game after you haven't played for a while. The other way that, that's really, very important to that, that has nothing to do with Seven Wonders, is this is why game designers talk about keeping exceptions in the rules to a minimum. If you have exceptions in the game, like, okay, you can move three armies here, but not if it's in the second phase of the game, or if you have an infantry in that army because the infantry has to rest before you can move it. If you have all those little exceptions, even if they make sense thematically, they're going to be really hard for people to remember from game to game. They're only going to remember it if they're playing the game like every week. And usually that doesn't happen. Usually there's going to be a break and they're going to come back to it after a while. And they've got to go back to the rule book and kind of relearn the game. And no one wants to relearn a game after you've already learned it. So leave out exceptions. Start off every game with simple choices and build up to more complex choices, and you'll have a game that people can return to and feel open to returning to time after time. There are lots of games that do this really well. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments of games that do that well. Um, or, or games even, I don't like to criticize other games, but maybe games that could have done this a little bit better. Um, I'll actually mention one of mine. I think Euphoria probably could have done this better, because in Euphoria, you're presented with like 20 options right away from the beginning of the game, and it can be a little overwhelming. Um, yeah, so I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks.